尊敬的各位来宾，本次会议即将开始，请您尽快就座，并将手机等通讯设备关闭或置于静音状态。谢谢您的合作。Ladies and gentlemen, the event will begin shortly. Can we please ask for you to kindly take your seats? We would like to remind you again to switch off all mobile phones and put electronic devices to silent mode. Thank you for your cooperation. In future, China Telecom will work with WBBA partners to drive the growth and prosperity of the organization and share our standards, outcomes, and experience with the world. Well, there are many existing standards bodies that are focused on the technical specification of next generation broadband. But the WBBA has been created to focus on the business financial and the regulatory challenges of creating a viable you know, next generation broadband industry over the coming 10 to 15 years. Truly making the WBBA an increasingly important platform for international collaboration within the broadband industry. So the single most important thing that the World Broadband Association has to, has to do over the next couple of years is to create that same sense of excitement uh, with people everywhere uh, about broadband to influence policy makers, uh, regulators, investors. Today, broadband networks and the services that ride atop are to many deemed critical national infrastructure, essential to our modern digital lives in all of its forms. Chorus joined the WBBA because we believe that it will help identify and drive 
share goals across the broadband industry. Let's embrace it, come into it, contribute to it, and grow with it, together with WBBA. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and good morning. Welcome to World Broadband Association official launch ceremony. I'm Li Jun, Vice President from China Telecom, today's host. It is such a great honor to have all of you joining the event at this special historic moment. As the video clip, clip shows, it is indeed everyone's great ideas, efforts, and contributions to make WBBA's official launch. And today, we are going to witness the great milestone and start an even more exciting journey together. Due to the current situation, for the convenience of all attendees, we hold the event majorly online. Before my language switches back to Chinese, I would like to kindly remind all the guests that today's event is set up with simultaneously interpretations. You can choose English or Chinese channel on the system you use. 尊敬的各位领导正像刚才短片中看到的介绍出席本次活动的主要嘉宾中国电信集团有限公司董事长柯瑞文先生中国联合网络通信集团有限公司副总经理梁宝俊先生华为光产品线总裁WBBA后任董事金玉智先生 泰国国家电信公司高级副总裁Surachit Springpotgram先生 今天参会的嘉宾还有全球海事集团首席副董事长Ian Douglas先生 中国通信协会副理事长兼秘书长张元川先生 中国信息通信研究院副院长王志勤女士 中心通信副总裁王新辉先生 新华三副总裁何宁先生上海诺基亚贝尔股份有限公司执行副总裁陈玉华先生国新国际、宽带资本、电信海外基金等投资机构
等诸多代表。今天的活动啊，我们共有来自亚洲、欧洲、非洲、北美洲、大洋洲五个大洲、十八个国家与地区、六家政府部门及国际协会、十一家全球运营商、上百家云网宽带的生态企业、金融投资机构和新闻媒体，共计二百余名嘉宾参会。让我们以分布在全球五大洲的热烈掌声，共同欢迎各位领导、嘉宾和朋友们出席本次发布活动，并向大家致以由衷的感谢和敬意。二零二二年十一月十一日 ，WBBA 获得了瑞士联邦政府颁发的组织编号，正式进入瑞士国际组织名录。回顾一年多来的最初的设想。到 WBBA 的正式成立，离不开 WBBA 创始成员的大力支持，以及产业各方力量的共同努力，在此仅向大家表示衷心的感谢。本次活动以“消除数字鸿沟，共创数字经济未来”为主题，主要是为了推荐 WBBA 的使命与愿景，聚合全球云网宽带产业链，促进全球数字信息基础设施的创新，推动。全球云网宽带产业的发展，助力全球数字经济的繁荣。活动包括嘉宾致辞、主旨演讲以及揭牌仪式三个环节，同步在全球多个直播频道进行直播。下面，让我们进入活动的第一项议程。首先，我们非常荣幸地邀请到了中华人民共和国工业和信息化部副部长张云明先生，请张部长为本次活动。进行视频致辞，大家欢迎。Now let's welcome Your Excellency, Mr. Zhang Yunming, Vice Minister of MIT of People's Republic of China, to make a video opening address. Respected Chairman of the Chairman of the Chairman of the Chairman 很高兴参加二零二二全球云网宽带产业协会的成立发布会，与各位一道共商云网宽带产业繁荣之道，共谋数字经济高质量发展之策。受金庄龙部长委托，我请代表工业和信息化部，对全球。云网宽带产业协会的正式成立表示热烈祝贺，向今天与会的各位嘉宾表示诚挚欢迎。当前，时代之变和世纪疫情交织叠加，数字经济正成为重组全球要素资源，重塑。全球经济结构，改变全球竞争格局的关键力量。一，云网融合为主要特征的数字信息基础设施，逐步成为经济社会数字化转型的强大支撑。中国政府高度重视数字信息基础设施建设。习近平主席强调。要加快建设智能化、综合性数字信息基础设施，打通经济社会发展的信息大动脉。中国电信作为数字中国建设的主力军，发挥自身专业优势，打造全球首个融合宽带产业发展的国际协会组织，努力为推动技术创新。产业融合和应用普及做出积极贡献。我们要发挥好这一平台作用，在开放中谋求发展，在合作中破解难题，携手推动云网宽带产业繁荣发展。借此机会，我与大家交流五点思考和建议：一是以创新为不竭动力。推动技术变革升级，坚持技术引领，凝聚各方力量，着力推动
关键核心技术、基础前沿技术创新突破，营造良好的技术开发环境，持续优化产学研协同机制，加速云网快带信息技术的研发成果转化，建立健全云网宽带技术标准和测评体系。主动参与国际规则和标准的研究制定，不断提高全球云网快带技术和应用的安全性、可靠性和广泛性，为推动全球数字信息技术设施建设和发展贡献中国力量。二是以应用为有力牵引，丰富产业发展前景。充分挖掘市场潜力，吸引高质量投资，积极推动应用推广升级，不断强化全球云网宽带产品和服务的供给能力，坚持量子齐升，逐步扩大云网宽带应用的行业规模、网络规模、终端规模，不断提升创新力度、融合程度。渗透深度，更大力度推动云网宽带技术在经济社会发展中的普及应用，聚焦工业制造、交通、教育、医疗等重点领域，推进跨行业应用协同创新，持续激发数字经济高质量发展的新动能。三是，以融合为主要枷锁，促进行业。高效协同，凝聚产业共识，建立服务于行业的统一数字化平台，促进生产要素自由高效集聚，加速推进云网宽带产业融合创新，加大产业链通力协作，加快弥补核心芯片、关键器件等重要领域的短板弱项，提升。全链条的韧性和供给能力，深入实施“互联网加”“智能加”等发展战略，推进云网宽带信息技术与传统产业的深度融合，加速全球传统产业的数字化、网络化和智能化转型升级，助力培育更多的新产业、新模式。新业态。四是，以开放为时代理念，扩大国际合作空间，充分发挥桥梁纽带作用，构建互联互通的全球云网宽带发展通道，搭建高效协同、开拓创新的生态体系，凝聚数字化发展合力。进一步深化同国际组织、研究机构、跨国企业在技术、应用、产业、安全等领域的交流互鉴，加大标准化、国际高端人才的引进力度，积极营造互利共赢的国际合作氛围，推动形成全球数字经济发展新格局。五是以共赢为使命担当，深化全球数字治理，充分发挥协会优势，深入了解不同国家和地区的发展情况，准确把握云和宽带产业发展的特点和规律，着力推动构建各方普遍接收、行之有效的数字经济规则体系。更大限度地提升政策法规的适应性、科学性、公平性和可操作性，为完善全球数字治理体系、提升全球数字治理水平做出积极贡献。朋友们，让我们携手把握数字时代新机遇，博化数字经济新未来，共同促进。全球云网宽带产业繁荣，为推动全球数字化转型赋能
数字经济高质量发展，贡献新的、更大力量。最后，预祝发布会圆满成功，谢谢大家。谢谢张部长，非常感谢云明部长对于云网宽带发展在创新驱动、应用牵引、融合协同、开放合作。共赢治理方面的五点建议，非常感谢。国际电信联盟是联合国主管信息通信技术事务的重要国际组织。今天，我们也非常荣幸地邀请到了国际电信联盟秘书长赵厚林先生，为我们发表线上致辞。请大家热烈欢迎，有请赵秘书长。Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Zhao Houlin, Secretary General of ITU, to give us an online address. Very good. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Mr. Zhang Yunming, Vice Minister of uh, MIIT. Mr. Mats Greenyard, my dear friend, Director General of GSMA. Mr. Corey Wan, Chairman of China Telecom. Mr. Xu Zijing, Acting CEO of Huawei. Dear colleagues, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to address the World Broadband Association official launch ceremony. Almost three years into the COVID-19 pandemic, the virus is still raging on. Amid this human tragedy, Broadband infrastructure has played a critical role in building resilience of the society and enabling billions of people to work, study, receive health care, and socialize remotely. What we need to remember, however, is still billions more do not have the same chance. According to the latest ITU data released earlier this week, some 2.7 billion people remain offline, despite the accelerated uptake of the internet connecting during the pandemic. It should also be noted that a broadband divide between urban and the rural areas exists worldwide, everywhere, even in developed countries. People living in these areas without a good broadband connection have suffered much more during this crisis, highlighting the urgent need to further extend the broadband coverage. Along with the rise of the global digital economy, as well as the digital transformation of industry, new demands are raised for broadband networks and great challenges are imposed to broadband development. Let me mention a few. The data divide widely existing, lack of effective guidance on industrial policies, traffic growth in traditional services not yielding additional revenue, future-oriented new services requiring the enhancement of network profitability, a reduction in operation and the maintenance costs, a shorter cycle of returning on investment, and the need to involve new stakeholders to accelerate the rollout of network infrastructure and attract investors. In addressing these challenges, all stakeholders have important roles to play. Government needs to formulate investment-friendly policies, telecom operators, and investors needed to accelerate and improve their networks while ruling out plan for wide coverage and fast access. And equipment manufacturers need to drive cost-efficient, innovative technologies to meet the ever-increasing demand for digital transformation, all of which rely on the industrial collaboration that asks for the participation of all broadband business stakeholders under a shared vision. WBBA is timely perfect in facing similar to that of mobile industry stakeholders under GSMA. WBBA 
aims to push forward innovative breakthroughs in the broadband industry, including technologies, services, and business model. In 2021, WBBA conducted a frontier research and issued a white paper on a wide range of subjects, such as broadband policies and regulations, strategies and evolution routes, scenarios and use cases, and the development in a sustainable way. WBBA also explored how to strengthen planning guidance, consolidate the industry foundation, enrich integrated applications, optimize the ecologic environment, and further international cooperation. In the near future, I hope to see WBBA, a new leader in serving global broadband network operators, vendors, cloud services providers, investors, and other stakeholders. I hope to see your achievement in various aspects to bridge the digital divide. I hope to see the blooming cloud and broadband industry all around the world. Mr. Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, has reiterated the importance of bridging the digital divide and call for universal and affordable network connectivity for all people by 2030. This is also the goal of ITU. I appeal to all members of ITU and other stakeholders to make a persistent efforts toward the UN 2030 agenda for sustainable development goals, as well as the goals set by the World Summit on the Information Society, which is an ITU's Connect 2030 agenda. In recent years, the UN Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development, which is established by ITU and UNESCO, has devoted great efforts to standardization and uh, broadband development. In September 2022, this commission published its annual development report titled The State of Broadband, Accelerating Broadband for New Realities. This report presents 15 specific development goals, mainly focusing on universality, technology, and affordability. In pursuing the common goals, WBBA can join hands with other international organizations like ITU and the UN Broadband Commission to speed up broadband development. Today, I'm very pleased to see the official launch of the World Broadband Association for our cloud and broadband family. I congratulate all of you on offering the broadband industry family a global platform and a collective voice. WBBA is expected to help integrate the industry claim, industry chain, strengthen the broadband infrastructure and improve cloud network service capabilities. I wish WBBA a great success and I hope more and more stakeholders will join you in this endeavor. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just step up to call you to make more efforts toward the affordable universal connectivity by 2030. This is both a challenge to the world and uh, responsibility of the broadband industry family. My strategy going based on what four eyes, what I call infrastructure, investment, innovation, and inclusiveness. And there's no doubt, the broadband hold the key to the infrastructure and to our future. I call on WBBA members and all other stakeholders working together to extend the benefit of broadband to every corner of the world and create a better digital future for all. I thank you very much and I wish all success of this WBBA. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary General, Mr. Zhao, uh, for your high ex expectations for WBBA's future development. And uh, uh, for sure, WBBA's development is uh, aiming at uh, uh, acceleration of the broadband uh, development and uh, construction of the broadband uh, infrastructure. And we hope we can have, uh, always have your suggestions in the future. Thank you, Zhao Mishu Zhao. GSMA是全球移动通信领域最具影响力的国际协会之一。今天, GSMA总干事, 
Matt Granwith 先生也受邀为 WBBA 正式发布的、正式成立发布会录制了致辞的视频，请大家欢迎。Next, please welcome Mr. Matt Granwith, Director General of GSMA, to give us a video speech. Hello, everyone. It is such a pleasure to be here with you, albeit virtually, to celebrate the launch of the World Broadband Association. It is always an honor to be included in important milestones like this. So thank you, Chairman Ke and China Telecom, for your kind invitation to join today. Now, let me start with a big congratulations on the launch of the World Broadband Association. We really are living in the midst of the next technological revolution. And as we navigate our way towards a better and more sustainable world for everyone, forums like this one will be crucial in bringing together leaders and stakeholders from across industries to share ideas, to challenge and to innovate and to work towards unleashing the full power of connectivity for everyone. In 2016, the mobile industry was the first industry to commit to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And since then, we have worked hard to contribute to all 17 SDGs. But the reality is that we have only a few years left to achieve our goals, and the pandemic has set us back. So we must work even harder in the coming years to get ourselves back on track. And the World Broadband Association is going to be key to this bringing together industry stakeholders to work on closing the digital divide, ensuring that we can maximize the social, environmental, and economic benefits of broadband for everyone. Now, uh, the good news is that today, 95% of the world is covered by mobile broadband networks. Now, this is thanks to the concerted efforts of mobile network operators around the world who are investing in building networks and developing solutions to reach even the most rural of rural areas. As coverage increases, we find more people connecting to mobile internet. And uh, by the end of last year, more than half the, uh, of the world's population was connected, with 300 million more people coming online in the last year alone. Uh, but as encouraging as these numbers are, there is still a lot more work to be done to connect the other half of the population. In total, 3.6 billion people remain unconnected. This is made up of the coverage gap, the 400 million who lives in areas that are not yet covered by mobile broadband. And then you have the usage gap, the 3.2 billion people who are covered by mobile broadband but are not yet online. Again, the good news is that we are making progress in closing the coverage gap. Over the past seven years, we have managed to reduce the coverage gap from 19% to only 5%, a remarkable achievement. Now, the usage gap is being reduced too, but it still remains substantial, over eight times the size of the coverage gap. And of course, gender plays a huge role here too, with women in low and middle income countries are being 16% less likely than men to use mobile internet. If we want to build stronger businesses and communities and achieve the sustainable development goals, we simply cannot afford to leave anyone, and I mean anyone, behind. It is absolutely essential that we focus on closing the usage gap and the remaining coverage gap in the years to come. The challenge that lies ahead is a big one, but it is one that is worth fighting for. And uh, the GSMA is uh, committed to working with partners around the world to develop strategies and solutions to addressing it. For example, our mobile internet skills training toolkit has empowered over 50 million people with the basic skills they need to access and use mobile internet. And uh, through our Connected Women Commitment Initiative, over 40 mobile operators have made formal commitments to reach more women with mobile internet 
and mobile money services. Now, this has been an incredibly powerful initiative, which has reached over 55 million additional women since 2016. So you can see how working together, working decisively, can help to achieve incredible results. And as an industry, we have already come so far, covering 95% of the global population with our mobile networks and bringing 55% of the world online. Now, these figures are truly remarkable. And I know that if we keep working together through forums like uh, the World Broadband Association, we can absolutely achieve our goal of closing the coverage gap and the usage gap, ensuring that everyone everywhere has the chance to benefit from the transformational power of connectivity. Now, congratulations once again, and I look forward to working with you all in the years to come. Thank you very much, and bye bye. Thank you very much, uh, Director General Mats Granrid. Uh, definitely, WBBA will learn from the successful stories from GSMA and deepen the cooperation with GSMA and uh, to jointly promote the popularity and development of the world broadband industry. Thank you. As WBBA's main founder, China Telecom is pushing the development of the new information infrastructure for the development of the internet. And in the field of data mining, China Telecom's vice president, Ke Ruiwen, has personally supported WBBA's development and creation. Let us welcome Ke Ruiwen Vice President 为发布会致辞，请大家欢迎。Now, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Mr. Kerwin, Chairman of China Telecom, to give an address. Thank你们。尊敬的赵厚林秘书长，徐志军轮值董事长，各位领导，各位嘉宾、女士们、先生们。大家好首先我请代表中国电信向所有的嘉宾以及在线的观众表示热烈的欢迎向对大会召开给予大力支持的协会创始成员和产业各方致以衷心的感谢当前世界正加速迈向 随着新一轮科技革命和产业变革的深入发展，把握数字时代的机遇，加速数字技术的创新，持续释放数字的红利，已经成为世界各国各地区推动经济复苏的重要动力。近年来，全球数字经济发展强劲。据有关测算， 2021年全球47个国家数字经济的增加值规模达到了38.1万亿美元 数字经济对经济发展的稳定加速作用更加凸显。数字经济的快速发展离不开与云网宽带为代表的数字信息基础设施建设的稳步推进。云网宽带等数字信息基础设施在推动科技创新、拉动有效投资、促进信息消费、
、确定性服务、可量化的安全等新的需求的出现，对云网宽带的组网能力提出了更高的要求。二是缺少权威性的国际组织，缺少被国际社会广泛接受的技术标准，阻碍了云网宽带及相关产业链的发展壮大。三是云网宽带的应用。和服务的供给能力还不足，数字经济的高质量发展受到制约。不仅如此，我们还要认识到，云网宽带的普及是推动全球互联网互联互通的关键引擎。据报道，全球仍有二十七亿人没有接入互联网。这说明云网宽带等数字信息基础设施建设仍然不足。全球数字鸿沟依然很大，联合国二零三零可持续发展议程的实现，仍需付出巨大的努力。面对新机遇、新挑战，加快数字信息基础设施的建设，破解数字鸿沟的难题，推动全球数字经济发展，已成为我们共同的使命。近年来，中国的信息通信行业高速发展，云网宽带等数字信息基础设施的建设。实现了跨越式的发展，已经建成全球规模最大、技术领先的网络基础设施，所有的地势全面建成了官网的城市，行政村光纤覆盖率超过了百分之九十九。中国电信积极推进以云网融合为核心特征的数字信息基础设施的建设，坚持网式基础、云为核心。网随云动、云网一体的演进思路，并不断实践，探索出了一条具有中国电信特色的云网宽带发展之路。中国电信持续加强以光纤为主要承载的网络建设，现已建成全球领先的千兆光纤网络，实施全光网二点零的计划，并创新打造新型城域网。截止十一月，中国电信的宽带用户规模超二点一亿户，千兆光网、十基胖网络覆盖三百多个城市，二点八亿住户。作为承载云网宽带的基础设施，中国电信持续加强天云的建设和部署，构建自主可控的天翼云技术体系。天翼云四点零正式商用，成为全球最大的运营商的云和中国最大的混合云。我们基于自身云网资源的禀赋，积极创新云网生态，打造出云网边端安能力于一体的中国电信的第五张网——天翼视联网。目前已经接入终端超过四千七百万部，同时。我们打造一大批基于云上的智慧家庭、智慧社区和数字乡村等数字化产品，落地了名厨靓灶等多元化场景的应用，带动了信息消费，推动了数字红利的普惠共享。目前，智慧家庭达到一点四亿户，智慧社区达到四点八万个，数字乡村达到十四点九万个。女士们、先生们，为实现云网宽带产业的更好发展，不断弥合数字鸿沟，持续发挥云网宽带赋能数字经济的作用，中国电信联合国内外企业和机构，成立了全球云网宽带产业协会。协会致力于聚合全球云网宽带产业链，致力于消除数字鸿沟。促进产业链沟通和交流，加强技术合作，促进全球云网基础设施的创新，推动云网宽带产业的发展，促进全球数字经济的繁荣。女士们、先生们，促进合作共赢，推进创新发展，弥合数字鸿沟，是全球云网宽带产业协会的使命所在。我们要秉持共商共享。共赢的原则，在开放中创造机遇，在合作中破解难题
，共同推动全球云网宽带产业的繁荣，持续推动数字经济高质量的发展，构建更加美好的未来。在这里，我提三点倡议：一、高水平促进合作共赢，合作是基础，共赢是目标。我们要打造。开放共享的全球生态，中国电信愿做出表率，主动分享在官网建设、电信普遍服务、智慧运营等方面的经验，贡献中国电信云网宽带发展智慧，建立全球云生态合作计划，围绕着云网边端等方向，不断提升产业链供应链的韧性，与全球宽带网络运营商。供应商、云服务提供商、产业资本和其他利益相关者，构建命运共同体，深化国际创新、科技合作，拉紧与其他国际组织的合作纽带，通过深化合作共赢，不断提升云网宽带行业的价值，持续赋能数字经济的发展。二，高质量推进。创新发展，宽带发展不是一蹴而就的，我们要打造国际创新的平台，针对不同地区、国家云网宽带发展的阶段、路径、技术方向和运营能力的差异，共同探讨云网宽带演进的路径和方向，持续探索全球云网宽带建设的最佳方案，立足实际，发布。云网宽带发展指数，深入挖掘全球云网宽带事业的提升空间，编制云网宽带代际发展白皮书，与各界共享发展成果，互鉴发展经验，依托创新发展，进一步激发云网宽带发展的活力、动力，不断繁荣数字经济的发展。三，高标准弥合数字鸿沟。消弭数字鸿沟，增强数字包容性，让不同人群共享数字化发展的成果，是我们共同的目标。我们要探索低成本、快速敏捷的部署方案，对接产业基金，打造成功投资案例，加快全球数字信息基础设施的普及，提供数字化平台，开放接口标准。开发更具包容性的数字化应用，让更多的人群享受数字红利。中国电信愿贡献智慧和力量，紧贴全球云网宽带需求，搭建技术业务交流培训平台，助推全球数字化能力提升。通过增强数字包容性，加快全球数字化转型，进一步释放。数字经济的潜力，女士们、先生们，中国电信愿携手各方，凝聚云网宽带产业共识，破解云网宽带产业难题，创新云网宽带产业的发展，加快弥合全球数字鸿沟，共同创造更加美好的未来。谢谢大家。非常感谢柯瑞恩董事长的精彩致辞。柯董事长对全球云网宽带产业提出了共商、共建、共赢发展倡议。他的三点倡议包括：高水平促进合作共赢，高质量推进创新发展，高标准弥合数字鸿沟。谢谢柯董事长。华为公司作为全球领先的。信息与通信技术解决方案供应商，一直致力于实现未来信息社会，构建更美好的全链接世界。作为主要创始成员，华为公司对于 WBBA 的发起设立给予了大力支持。下面，让我们有请华为公司副董事长、轮值董事长徐志军先生进行线上致辞，请大家欢迎。Now let's welcome. Mr. Xu Zhijun, Deputy Chairman, Rotating Chairman of Huawei, to give an online address.
尊敬的柯董事长、高秘书长、女士们、先生们，大家下午好。我仅代表华为就 WBBA 正式成立，向所有成员表示热烈的祝贺。WBBA 的成立是宽带产业发展的里程碑事件，对宽带产业和是数字化经济的发展具有重要意义。特别感谢柯董事长。张秘书长个人以及中国电信在 WBBA 的成立过程中所做出的努力和贡献，谢谢。我们看到全球宽带产业经过多年的发展，成果显著，在丰富人们的沟通和生活、促进行业数字化转型，以及在防疫抗疫的过程中发挥了积极的作用，其价值、其价值日益凸显。在同时，产业进一步发展也面临着一些难点、问题和全新挑战，需要产业界共同推动解决。一是区域发展不平衡问题，在中国、日韩等地区，基本已经实现了光纤宽带的普及，且已经进入了千兆光网时代。但在广大发展中国家，甚至一些发达区域，仍有大量的用户在使用传统的铜线宽带，严重影响了业务的发展。和居民使用宽带的体验，产生这种情况的原因是多方面的，有商业上的考虑，有实际实施的各种困难，也有政策方面的原因。二是宽带产业的发展缺少产业链整体的协同和有序推进。对比无线领域，从两 G、三 G、四 G 到五 G， 有非常清晰的演进路径，产业链也围绕着这个代际的发展，有序向前演进。这一点值得过往产业借鉴。华为推动定义并发展 5.5G、F 5.5G 和 Net 5.5G 网络技术创新。我们也很高兴的看到 ，WBBA 成立了相关工作组，围绕这一主题进行了相关研究和探索。这是一个良好的开端。后续仍仍然需要产业界相关的组织、团体和机构共同参与到此项事业中来。三是新时期过往宽带如何和千行百业深度融合的问题。随着产业数字化深入推进，越来越多企业生产系统开始上游，这对网络的要求不仅仅是贷款一个单一维度，对时延、可靠性等也提出了更为严苛的要求。如何更好地满足这些新的需求，支撑数字经济加速发展？这既是过往宽带产业面临的新挑战。也是新机遇，需要产业界开展广泛的合作、研究和探讨，促进数字经济发展，让数字技术有效使人千行百业，实现数字化转型升级，实现数字经济和实体经济的深度融合，是战略方向。华为在促进宽带发展和宽带应用方面一直在进行探索，我们和中国电信联合创新，提出了 FTTR 的宽带解决方案。实现了家庭内部无死角的千兆 WiFi 覆盖，极大提升了家庭网络的品质和体验。目前在中国已经规模上映。类似这样的创新，不仅仅在中国，在家庭场景，我们希望在全球各个国家和地区，在企业应用的场景中广泛应用，使全球人民和企业都受益于技术的进步和发展。面对这些问题和挑战。WBBA 首先要围绕当前过往宽带面临的最突出问题开展工作，要向无线产业学习，探索定义并形成过往宽带产业的代际，引领整个产业走上有序发展的轨道，打造过往产业的 GSMA。在此，我提出几点建议：一 ，WBBA 作为全球过往产业高层对话和协作机制平平的平台。应致力于凝聚全球宽带产业利益相关方，包括全球运营商、设备商、互联网厂商、垂直行业、政府等，高效讨论宽带产业的问题和挑战，推动包括政策创新、基础设施建设及投资等一致性方向和行动，应对宽带产业未来发展面临的不确定性挑战。第二，针对面向未来网络发展的目标网架构，要提前开展研究。推动固网数字基础设施的发展。第三，在固网宽带赋能产业数字化方面
，要挖掘优秀案例，总结成功经验，在全球范围内进行复制推广。第四，长远来看，希望 WBBA 不仅针对产业问题、产业应用、产业趋势等开展调查研究，同时也要扩大自身的影响力，成为政府、行业、标准组织、运营商、设备商等产业链共患的问题对象和合作伙伴，建成最具影响力的。全球不网红的产业平台，我相信，通过 WBBA 的产业平台，将产业的产业链的相关方紧密团结起来，共同解决产业面临的问题，探索和指引未来产业发展的方向，必将对不网红在未来的发展产生深远影响。最后，我希望更多的地区域、产业、企业和组织加入到 WBBA 大家庭中来。那我们携手，共创宽带产业美好的未来。谢谢。非常感谢徐董事长。徐董事长刚才跟我们分享了华为在技术创新方面的架构的方向，以及云网宽带赋能千行百业的思路。他也提出了对 W W B B A 发展的三点的倡议。截止到目前啊，本次活动精彩的致辞环节。告一段落，下面让我们进入到主旨演讲的环节。今天呀、啊，我们也很荣幸地邀请到 WBBA 的后任董事李正茂博士，作为全球云网宽带和数字经济创新发展的行业专家，今天他将与我们分享对于全球云网宽带产业的思考，并对 WBBA 的未来发展提出设想与建议，请大家欢迎。Let's give a warm welcome for Dr. Li Zhengmao, WBBA Director Elect, to give a keynote speech. Distinguished leaders, guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it's my prayer to be here with friends around the world to witness the official launch ceremony of the World Broadband Association. Share my point of view about world broadband industry, send my best wishes and high expectations to WBBA. Today, the world is experiencing great changes as well as challenges from the pandemic. A new round of scientific and industrial revolution, especially the digital technology, is reshaping the economic growth mode, the productivity development, and the progress of all industries. There are three accelerated evolution going on. First, the growing scale of digital economy has become a major factor affecting the world economic landscape instead of traditional industrial economy. Second, the stage of productive is shifting from the era of electric power to the era of computing power. Third, the foundation of a digital economy is changing from connectivity-based network infrastructure to a cloud network converged infrastructure. In the future, the world broadband industry will show four trends, high speed and ubiquitous cloud network convergency intelligence and agility, green and sustainable. Currently, the world broadband industry is facing three main challenges. First, the development of broadband is unbalanced. Digital divides still exist. According to the latest reports of ITU, 2.7 billion people still haven't access to the internet. Second, the overall construction level of broadband is not high. Traditional cable network is still widely used in many regions. Third, the industry ecology is not healthy. The supply side and the demand side are unbalanced. 
driven by the digital industrialization and uh, industry digitalization. Emerging industries such as industry inter internet, cloud, AR, VR, and the metaverse are gradually becoming a reality. Those new industries need the support of a high-speed and ubiquitous interconnected network system, as well as cloud network convergency scaling system to properly distribute the computing power. However, existing supply cannot meet the demand. The industrial ecology not yet balanced these two sides. The prosperity of the world broadband industry relies on the joint endeavor and the coordination of various parties. For example, the government should formulate policies that encourage investment and infrastructure upgrading. Telecom operators should upgrade their technology and introduce better cloud network convergency solution. Manufacturers and suppliers need to produce more powerful and cost-effective equipment. Investment funds need to increase their investment to stimulate the construction of digital infrastructure in underdeveloped countries and regions. International associations should promote communication and cooperation among all parties in the industry ecology and contribute to a win-win solution. In order to create a better industry ecology, WBBA focuses on connecting the critical stakeholders from the supply side and the demand side, forming a higher level dynamic balance, which could be concluded as demand drives supply and the supply creates demand. Uniting the global broadband in industry chain, promoting the construction and the innovation of cloud network convergency infrastructure, bridging the digital divides, and achieving the prosperity of the world broadband industry. As an open international association, WBBA hopes to support the groups in vulnerable situations so that more countries and people can benefit from the achievements of internet development, making contributions in fulfilling United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in order to solve the challenges of structuring the development of broadband WBBA has set up three working groups. Generational Roadmap Working Group, Success Stories Working Group, and Sustainability Working Group. Those three working groups need to work hard in their respective fields and cooperate with each other in order to accelerate in the construction of digital infrastructure, bridging the di digital divide, sharing successful cases, and promoting broadband industry upgrade, linking the supply side and the demand side, building a high-level dynamic balance. WBBA is a non-profit global organization headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland. At present, 11 leading enterprises around the world have joined the membership. WBBA plans to cooperate with the Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development of UN, ITU, Build and Road Summit, GSMA, and other international associations to periodically hold top-level conferences 
sharing successful cases, promoting trades, and clarifying industry demands. The official launch of WBBA helps to build an open and innovative global ecology. It also benefits the global cooperation, facilitating the golden principles of extensive consultation, shared benefits, and win-win development, achieving the prosperity of world broadband industry. Ladies and gentlemen, we sincerely hope that more and more partners will join WBBA in the endeavor to facilitate the construction of a digital infrastructure, bridge the digital divide, and bring the benefits to digital econo economy to all mankind. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee pointed out the challenges and opportunities of the broadband industry, the mission and vision of the WBBA. He, always ma he already mapped out uh, the tasks for all the attendees today. So the, all the members right now in WBBA, I believe that WBBA is ready to accept more new members joining us. Thank you very much. Today, we also invited Martin Kreiner, the TMF President, CEO, and now WBBA President. He will be recording a speech with us. 下面请播放 Martin Kreiner 先生的演讲视频。Next, we'll have Mr. Martin Kreiner, Director General of WBBA, for his video speech. Please welcome. Hello, I'm Martin Kreiner, and I'd like to talk to you today about shaping the future of world broadband. I'd like to thank China Telecom for hosting this excellent event in order to launch the World Broadband Association to our wide industry in both China and right across the world. I'm the Director General of the newly formed World Broadband Association. And a little bit about me. In my past, I was the President and CEO of the TM Forum, which is the global industry body for telecom software management standards. I'm also an author, and I've written a range of books on the whole challenge of transforming the telco and how to work within a broader digital economy. The World Broadband Association has been formed to really focus on shaping the future of global broadband. Its main goal is to bring together all of the stakeholders and decision makers in the industry to really help us address what we see as the key industry challenges effectively. And industry challenges such as how do we address the inequality of broadband access across the world? Or how do we de develop insightful regulation and policy for broadband in different parts of the world? We're also very focused on how do we ensure a sustainable service provider return investment for the rollout of this next generation of broadband? And importantly, how do we enable vertical industry in integration and def you know, help deliver end-to-end uh, ecosystems and experience. We're also very focused on how do we build a future-proof network. And there are many fine organizations already working on different challenges in the fixed broadband industry. The ITU, of course, really addresses a lot of the policy challenges, and the, the technical standards are well addressed by organizations like ETSI and BBF and ITF, to name but a few. But really, the focus of the World Broadband Association is on industry development and industry consensus on the key challenges of the business of broadband going forward. And when I talk about the stakeholders in the industry, I think of it in terms of a supply side and a demand side. The supply side of the industry drives an awful lot of the standardization discussions across all of the, the telco industry. And the supply side is really the, the people who build the networks, the network operators and so on, as well as the, the key equipment suppliers to those network operators. But the demand side is equally important in the broadband world. And the demand side 
is everything from on the consumer end, the gaming and metaverse players, the vertical industry players in healthcare and manufacturing and multiple other vertical industry, as well as the people who are producing the key uh, devices and, and even chips that will support this industry. And then more broadly, of course, the government is a key stakeholder in the future of broadband, as are the hyperscalers and the people who are developing the clouds that will carry a lot of the, the content, and of course the investment community, because broadband requires a lot of work on investment. The WBBA, over the last number of months, has been very active. It has been formed, it has been growing a number of of key pieces of work in important areas to, to the membership. The four key white papers I'll talk about today are one is around the importance of greater broadband in investment across the world. One is about how do we really understand that next generation roadmap and how it's going to evolve. There's a piece of work that has been going on for a number of months on the whole area of the role of broadband in environmental sustainability and of course there's a lot, broadband isn't starting today, it's been going for a long time. And what are some of those key success stories that we can all learn from? The, the white paper on greater broadband investment really was a broad look at the global argument for greater broadband investment. And, and key things like the correlation between broadband investment and GDP growth. And the practical reality that countries without advanced broadband networks will eventually be left behind in the digital economy. As part of this piece of work, we carried out quite a comprehensive survey of 81 countries on the rollout of fibre to home, fibre to premises. Mm -hmm. And we saw that the coverage is approximately 40 odd, 40 to 45 percent coverage. And the, one of the conclusions of the white paper is that maybe 70 percent uh, coverage is possible through private investment alone but for 100% investment, it will require government in intervention in some way. And that government intervention can help in areas like reducing regulatory bar barriers or creating greater flexibility in public-private partnership arrangements or how we achieve copper switch off and so on. The white paper on generational roadmap was really trying to, to think of the future of broadband. We know where we are today, but what's coming down the road in two, three, five, seven years? And it was a, it was a holistic way of looking at the generations in terms of the capabilities, not just in terms of speed or, or just latency, but also areas like the, the, um, the sustainability aspects, the level of intelligence, that's going to sit within the network, the security and reliability of the broadband networks of the future. And a generational roadmap took each one of these key characteristics and mapped out roughly where we are today in terms of, of speed, latency, etc., where we expect to be in the next version, which we called BB 5.5, and the next version, which would be BB 6. And this, this roadmap is available to anyone to download, any member to download from the, the WBBA website. The White Paper on Broadband Success Stories recognises that we have a wide range of levels of advancement across the world from some parts of the world that are already pushing the boundaries of capabilities to other parts of the world which are still getting started in the whole broadband journey. And so it contains a, a, a load of case studies, interesting success stories from some of the leading uh, operators. China Telecom certainly contributed well into this, as did Cordis in New Zealand, Huawei from the, the, the supplier side, Nokia from the supplier side. So there's a range of really interesting case studies that you can download and look at um, to understand what you might want to emulate over the coming years. Environmental sustainability, the white paper we've developed in environmental sustainability recognised the point that the telco industry is playing a big role in the global sustainability discussion, both directly and indirectly. And it looks at the key areas of sustainability that can be addressed, particularly how, how efficient fibre is in terms of, of the, the energy 
how energy hungry it is compared to other technologies. But it also looked at the scope one, scope two and scope three emissions that relate to, to the delivery of broadband. Again, a hugely important area that's only going to get more and more important over the coming decade. Finally, I'd just like to talk very briefly about some of the upcoming work that the WBBA is focusing on. Certainly, we need to keep going on some of the key areas, like refining that next generation roadmap. We've produced it to one level of detail, but there's already a demand from our members to understand that in a bit more detail. And so we will have to drill down and, and expand that out into more detail. We also have a working group which is now increasingly looking at the demand side of the requirements. The generational roadmap was really quite biased towards the supply side of the, the industry challenge, but the demand side of the industry challenge is, is equally important, and that is, is being now fleshed out by a new working group in this area. Broadband advocacy is going to become increasingly important. What's the economic and political rationale for accelerated broadband investment? I mentioned earlier that we can't, this is not a pure industry challenge. This is an industry holding hands with government challenge. And we need to understand what's the sweet spot for cooperation between the parties. The role of broadband in environmental sustainability, I, I just talked about a few moments ago, and that needs to to be looked at in even more detail. What can operators practically do? What can all the ecosystem practically do to make broadband as, sustain as environmentally sustainable as possible? And then finally, we have a new working group that's looking at, at the network technology evolution and really on what will that network topology look like to enable the new applications and scenarios of the future in a sustainable way. That's a brief overview of what the World Broadband Association has been doing over the last number of months. And moving forward into the future, we really would issue a call to you to join the WBBA and help us drive the future of the broadband industry and join the industry leading companies like China Telecom who have already got involved, rolled their sleeves up and really helped push us the, over the first few months of this, this organization. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Martin Kriner. Martin showed us how WBBA will shape the future of the global broadband, how, link, how to link the global broadband industries. And also, we're looking forward to more uh, advanced experiences, insights, roadmaps from WBBA, and more members will be joining us to carry those works he just mentioned. Thank you, Martin. China Communication Standards Association, CCSA, is focused on the development of the global broadband industry. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Wen Ku, Chairman of CCSA, to give us an online keynote speech. Ninjing的赵厚林秘书长,柯瑞文董事长,徐志军CEO,各位企业的领导,线上线下的嘉宾,女士们先生们,北京的同事们下午好,欧洲的同事们上午好。非常高兴参加2022WBBA成立发布会
沁入我们的生产生活当中，对拉动有效投资、促进信息消费、跨越数字鸿沟、推动产业高质量发展、促进经济数字化转型、加速网络强国、制造强国、数字中国建设，具有重要的意义。中国一直高度重视宽带发展。积极推动宽带中国战略，从村村通工程到电信普遍服务补偿机制，从提速降费再到固定移动双千兆行动计划，宽带产业发展的画卷徐徐展开，在推动经济社会各领域发展当中，扮演着越来越重要的角色。根据工业和信息化部统计。截止到二零二二十月末，三家基础电信企业固定互联网宽带接入用户总数五点八三亿户，移动电话用户总数十六点八二亿户，全国互联网宽带接入端口数十点六亿个，五 G 基站总数二百二十五万个，中国建成了全球规模最大的光纤和移动宽带网络。固定网络逐步实现从十兆到百兆再到千兆的跃升，移动网络实现从三 G 突破四 G 同步到五 G 千兆的跨越，历史性实现了村村通宽带、线线通五 G、市市通千兆。可以说，中国宽带发展满足了老百姓对高质量信息生活的追求和向往。不断提升了人民的获得感、幸福感和安全感。纵观世界，宽带是支撑全球各国经济发展的重要公共基础设施之一。宽带可使人们获得更多的知识、更好的数字技能、更宽、更广阔的发展机会。发展宽带将促进加速全球数字经济发展。发达国家非常注重宽带的发展，将其作为国家战略统筹推进。例如，美国启动全民互联网计划，德国实施了“二零三零千兆”战略，加速产业和经济数字化转型。根据通信数字媒体研究机构 Omedia 分析，宽带普及率每增加十个百分点。将推动 GDP 增长，呃，零点二五到一点五个百分点。Omedia 预测，未来五年光传输网络设备和光接入网络设备全球销售额预计年均复合增长率为百分之四点八和十三点二。二零二七年分别达到二百一十九亿美元和一百八十亿美元的量级。技术创新发展。是未来宽带发展的基础。以五 G、云计算、人工智能为代表的信息通信技术日新月异，全球光纤网络呈现梯次发展，光进同退，大势所趋，促进宽带朝着云化、智能化、高速泛载的方向发展，推动人类社会从移动互联网时代走向万物互联的智能时代。根据 Point Topic 统计，截止到二零二二年的第二季度，全球光纤接入用户达到九点三八亿户，同比增长百分之十一点五，全球固定宽带连接数达到十三点二亿，增长了百分之一点三四。然而，全球数字鸿沟依然明显，发达国家与发展中国家。城市与农村边远地区，数字鸿沟依然存在，仍有二十七亿人没有享受到宽带接入服务。全球宽带发展面临网络建设整体质量还不够高，接入速率还不够快，网络服务还亟待改善等问题。推动宽带发展，缩小数字鸿沟，任重道远。根据 ITU 和 Speed Test 的数据，在网络能力上，全球 4G 覆盖率为 88% 其中发达国家的 4G 覆盖率为 
，用户发展的水平上，全球互联网普及率达到了百分之六十六，网络资费与速率上。全球移动宽带费用占人均国民生产总值比例为百分之一点九，全球宽带、移动宽带和固定宽带的平均下载速率为三十三点四兆和七十二点四兆。在城乡发展上，全球城市和农村互联网普及率分别为百分之七十六和百分之三十九。全球城市和农村的四 G 覆盖率分别为百分之九十七和百分之七十五，发达国家城市和农村的四 G 覆盖率分别为百分之百和百分之九十三。女士们、先生们，加强宽带发展，完善数字治理，弥合数字鸿沟，构建普惠平衡、协调包容、合作共赢、共同繁荣的全球数字经济。成为业界共识，也是我们共同使命和责任。下面我就 WBBA 成立有三点体会和见解与大家分享：一是充分加强交流，凝聚全球智慧。WBBA 是一个非常有益的重要的国际组织，是产业探寻全球发展发展的呃新路径。共建全球宽带发展的新生态，共推全球数字经济发展的有益探索，必将为全球宽带发展注入新动力。经验告诉我们，宽带发展不是一蹴而就的。希望我们交流技术、装备、产业方面的成功经历，相互取长补短，促进共同进步，汇聚。起汇聚起推动全球宽带发展的强大动力，在交流中分享中国光纤、电信普遍服务、点亮工程等方面的经验，贡献中国宽带的发展智慧，推动全球宽带发展迈向更高水平。同时，学习借鉴吸收国际先进的宽带发展经验，推动我国宽带产业高质量发展。二是深化全面合作，提供优质服务。合作，合作是基础，共赢是目标。希望我们在网络建设、技术研发、设备生产、合作模式等方面开展全方位的合作，促进各国政府加大千兆光纤和五 G 网络建设，扩大网络覆盖范围，提升。网络服务水平，加强网络切片、边缘计算、高精度定位等关键技术的研究，研发技术先进、性能稳定、安全可靠的网络设备，加大推动发展中国家及地区的数字基础设施的建设力度，促进网络基础设施升级，整合利用各类优势资源，建立合作共赢的新模式，实现网络。宽带更宽，上网速度更快，为全人类提供用得上、用得起、用得好的宽带信息服务，让全球更多的国家和人民切实想到宽带发展的成果。三是制定国际标准，缩小数字鸿沟。标准是世界通行语言，也是引领产业高质量发展的技术基础。有利于技术统一、装备统一，加速形成技术成果产业化。中国通信标准化协会是我国信息通信领域的专业标准化组织，也是我国信息通信标准化国际的一个重要窗口和平台。近年来，制定了完成了大量的宽带和光纤行业标准和国家标准，为宽带产业高质量发展和网络强国建设。提供了重要的标准化支撑，同时积极组织国内产业界参与全球光纤和宽带国际标准的制定。中国通信标准化协会愿意与 WBBA 等国际组织合作，分享我国光纤和宽带领域的标准化工作经验和技术成果，共同推动国际呃宽带国际标准的制定与实施，助力全球缩小数字鸿沟。各位来宾，各位代表，治河者
不以山海为远。WBBA 是全球产业界携手探寻宽带发展的重要创举，也是凝聚产业界共识的智慧结晶。希望通过我们的共同努力，将 WBBA 打造成为行业知名、权威的国际组织。为全球宽带产业合作提供平台支撑，推动全球宽带创新发展行稳致远，满足人们对美好网络世界的愿景和期盼。最后，祝我们这次会议取得圆满成功，谢谢各位。非常感谢文库理事长，文理事长为 WBBA 未来的发展提出了。非常宝贵的建议，非常期待啊！未来 WBBA 和 CCSA 一起，共同凝聚全球智慧，深化全面合作，以高质量的云网宽带国际标准，为世界通信产业发展做出更大的贡献。让我们再次感谢文库理事长。诺基亚是 WBBA 的重要创始成员之一。下面啊，我们有请诺基亚固定网络业务首席技术官。Stephen Van Hestel 先生为我们做线上主旨演讲。Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Stephen Van Hestel, CTO of Nokia, to give an online speech. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the honorable, welcome and thank the honorable Mr. Zhang Yongming, Vice President of the MIIT, the honorable Mr. Zhao Haolin, Secretary General of the ITU, the honorable Mr. Ke. Rui Wen, Chairman of China Telecom, and the Honorable Mr. Xiao Guanglu, President of China Telecom. Of course, I also want to welcome the members of the World Broadband Alliance and the other attendees here today in this, uh, in this event. The title of my presentation is Let There Be Light, and I chose this title for two reasons. First of all, as has already been pointed out by the other speakers, there are many households, many people in the world that are still not connected. And as an industry, we need to make sure that we bring broadband, we bring light, we bring fiber broadband to those people. Second, I believe another important obligation and an important role for the World Broadband Association to play is to influence, to educate, to enlighten policymakers around the world, investors, media, and even the general public about the importance of broadband and to make sure that investments in broadband and broadband rollouts are accelerated. Nokia is extremely proud to be working together with the other members in the World Broadband Association, like China Telecom and Huawei, to make this happen. And we encourage everyone else to join uh, the, World Brand, uh, the World Broadband Association and, uh, and help, help us achieve this goal. Now, if we look at, uh, at the state of broadband, uh, yes, many, uh, many households, many people still need to be connected. But we've made enormous progress over the past decades. Only 20 years ago, a megabit per second was the fastest speed you could get. Today, driven by innovators and pioneers like China and China Telecom, the world has been moving to fiber. Many countries around the world now offer gigabit services to, to residential users even multi-gigabit services. We see countries with 2 gig, 4 gig, 8 gig, 10 gig, even 25 gig services now exist today. So enormous progress has been made, but of course, there's a lot of work to, to be done. Now, in order to, uh, to achieve this goal, I think two things are important. So first of all, yes, we need to connect. We need to connect everyone and make sure that everyone has access to uh, services like digital education, uh, digital health, etc. This will be very critical to bridge the digital divide. But we also make sure that it's, it's, not, it's, it's not enough to, to just connect people. We also need to make sure that everyone gets access to a good broad service, to enough speed so that they can access the services that they need. And also here, as an industry, we've come a very long way. The first mainstream fiber technologies were GPON and EPON. Today, we are in the 10 gigabit era with XGPON, these like XGPON 1 and XGSPON. And as an industry, we are already working on the next steps. 25 gig is already available today. Next is 50 gigabit, And we've already shown 
that 100 gigabit per second is possible. And that's not the end of it. Fiber technology will continue to evolve to meet the needs of any application, any service that's, that, uh, that we will be able to, uh, to think of. Now, one of the things that the World Broadband Association has uh, identified is that faster is no longer enough. Yes, as an industry, we tend to talk about speeds. I did the exact same thing when I started this presentation. I started talking about gigabits and 10 gigabits, but speed alone is not enough. Uh, other, aspect, other aspects of the connectivity are equally important. It's about adding greater intelligence to the network. It's about making the network more reliable and making the performance more consistent. It's about making the network greener, and it's about adding additional sensing capabilities and enhancing the connectivity overall. So this is part of the report that the, uh, or part of the work that the World Broadband Association has been working on, and it's a very, a very important observation. Speed, uh, speed is no longer enough. We need to care about these other aspects as well. Another, another, uh, other work that the World Broadband Association has been doing, and which, which Martin Greener uh, has already mentioned, is the generational roadmap. This is important because it's, it gives the industry and even the, the general audience an easy way to talk about successive generations of broadband. And one thing that I particularly like uh, is the following. Uh, if, you look at this, uh, if you look at this generational roadmap, you see some of the services that you would expect to see. You see the evolution from HDTV to 4K TV to 8K TV. You see the introduction of virtual reality, augmented reality. You, should, you see the introduction of the metaverse, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But you also see non-residential use cases uh, appearing. You see mission critical applications on this roadmap. And I believe that this is a very important evolution for the broadband network. Because yes, we're building, a bro we're building broadband networks initially to connect to consumers, to connect homes. But if you think about it, a fiber to the home network, for example, a broadband network is not just a broadband that is not just a network that connects homes, but it's actually an infrastructure that passes every street and every building. So yes, you can use that network to connect homes, but you can use that same network to connect universities, to connect hospitals, to connect smart city infrastructure, uh, to connect mobile small cells, for example. So one of the important evolutions that we see uh, is it's not just about connecting more people and making sure that they get good speeds, but it's also making sure that we use this infrastructure, which is actually an incredible asset, also for other purposes. And many people will say, yes, we've been, we've been talking about this for a long time. Why will this happen today? And I believe a number of technologies uh, are now coming together to make this possible. First of all, there's the ever increasing capacity. And today we're talking about uh, gigabit speeds and 10 gigabit speeds. So the capacity is there on the network. Uh, but there are also easy ways to use that capacity for different purposes thanks to software-defined uh, networking, thanks to progr programmable networks, you can actually slice them and you can program the network so that different slices can support, can easily support different services. So you can use one slice for residential services, you can use another slice for enterprise services, for example. And in addition, the network, uh, the network technology keeps getting more reliable, keeps getting greener. So all the technical uh, evolutions are now here to actually make sure that the broadband network can also be used for more than connecting than connecting people. Now, I started this presentation by, by talking about one of the missions of, uh, of, of the World Broadband Association, an, an important one, uh, in, in my opinion, is advocacy. It's influencing policymakers and investors, encouraging them to accelerate, to do, to do everything they can to accelerate the rollout of broadband networks, uh, to accelerate the investment in broadband. And actually, this should, be an, this should be an easy job, because if you think about it, broadband is actually a fantastic thing. Uh, broadband is actually what helps us bridge the digital divide and what politician, what government doesn't want us. But broadband is also a technology, an infrastructure that unlocks innovation by providing gigabit speeds to everyone and every startup company and every company and every company 
we actually remove any barriers for innovation. Uh, any innovator, any startup company can think of an idea, a new service, a new application, and they know they will have the network capacity, the reliability to make it happen, and that every user out there will have enough bandwidth to use that service. And number three, broadband also helps save the planet. Because of broadband, uh, we, allow, uh, we enable remote meetings so that people have to travel less. There are fewer cars on the road, there are fewer planes in the air. Because of broadband, we can enable smart metering. Right? So we can reduce the, power, the peak power consumption of, of homes and, and, and businesses. So broadband is absolutely, absolutely critical to help save the planet. Finally, an infrastructure. Broadband is an infrastructure that is absolutely future-proof. It will last for generations. The speeds will keep increasing. So broadband will evolve to, to meet future needs. So with that, I would like to thank everyone for, uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to present here. And Nokia looks forward to making the World Broadband Association a success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Stefan Van Hostel. Let there be light. Let everyone enjoy the beauty of the broadband. It's a mission. It's a promise. And it's an action. We really appreciate everyone's effort and uh, your commitment uh, in uh, leading the Nokia to uh, engage in the journey of elimination of the digital divide. Thank you. 下面我们有请Omedia的高级咨询总监 Mark Oliver为我们做线上主旨演讲, 请大家欢迎。Now let's invite Mr. Mark Oliver, senior representative from Omedia, to give an online speech. Please welcome. Hello everybody, my name is Mark Oliver and I'm Senior Consulting Director for Omdia, the research and consulting arm of Informa Tech. I'm delighted to have been a World Broadband Association member since its formation last year and I'm especially delighted to have been asked to participate in this WBBA event hosted by China Telecom to celebrate the launch of the World Broadband Association as an independent legal entity. Over the next few minutes I'd like to share with you a little bit about why we're involved with the WBBA how we are supporting its mission, and why you should join us and the other members on our journey to connect the world by bringing the benefit of broadband to all. At Informa Tech, our goal is to inform, educate, and connect the technology industry with the aim of inspiring them to build us all a better world. We do this via our market research, our consulting work, our media publications, conference events, and training brands. For example, if you are a reader of Light Reading or Telecoms.com, then you are a member of our community. If you have ever exhibited or attended as a delegate at NetworkX, Broadband World Forum, 5G World or Big 5G, then you are a member of our community. If you have ever planned the rollout of digital services based upon Omdia's World Broadband Information Series or our World Cellular Information Series, then again, you are a member of our community. And if you have studied for your telecoms MBA at the Telecoms Tech Academy, then you are a member of our community. In total, we have over 800 market researchers, consultants, editors, journalists, conference producers and lecturers, all experts in the industry that is information and communications technology. The reason I share all of this with you is that we are delighted to be part of the World Broadband Association movement and to offer the association our expertise and the platforms that give us reach into the market to help shape and inform the association's agenda and to amplify its voice. And we've been providing our expertise and both our physical and digital platforms to the World Broadband Association throughout 2022. We successfully co-hosted the World Broadband Association's Amsterdam annual event with Informa Tech's Network X in October. Additionally, providing speakers, content and event management support for a World Broadband Association event in Bangkok the following week, with over 350 people engaging with us over both events combined. Omdia industry analysts have also owned the pen on the WBBA's thought leadership content, working very closely indeed with the other members to produce research papers on industry critical hot topics as discussed and agreed in the World Broadband Association's working groups. We've also been publicizing the WBBA events and research via advertisements and other promotional activity 
on digital media properties like, like Reading and Telecoms.com, which have a combined 1.5 million monthly page views. Ondia is committed to the growth and success of the World Broadband Association and looks forward to working with our members and with you all to continue to achieve this in the future. I do want to take a step back and revisit how we've come to be here sitting at this World Broadband Association event with Omdia as a founder member. In late 2020, Omdia published a research paper called Delivering on the Promise of Broadband. And whilst our research shows that fixed broadband revenues will grow faster than mobile revenues on an annual basis until 2026, we also identified six key challenges that the broadband industry faces and needs to address in order to accelerate development to meet demand and provide key social and economic benefits. And you can see those six key industry challenges on the screen here. When we published that research paper, we were challenged by our industry partners to consider what the industry is doing to address them. And what we identified as a collective was the need to bring together broadband stakeholders for the purposes of industry development. We got to discussing and thinking about how to achieve that. And from that discussion, the World Broadband Association was born. The WBBA will provide an open organization and platform for cooperation and partnership across the industry and will seek to address the six key industry challenges that we see on the screen here. Since we first started to get involved and discuss the WBBA with partners and members, one of the very clear key motivations was the need to create a collective voice for the broadband industry, distinct already from the good and established work being done by standards and policy bodies. Our collective voice is focused on industry development, working in complementary fashion with other organizations like Etsy, Broadband Forum, ITU, and the FTTH Council. You can see here on the screen a very high level summary of how we've gone about building that collective voice together. Through collective thought leadership, events, digital media, collaboration and partnership among all the members. And we are very pleased to be here today as we launch and announce the recently completed process of registering the World Broadband Association as a fully independent legal entity in Switzerland. So just a very short final call to action here from me. Omdia is delighted to be a member of the World Broadband Association and to provide our research, digital media and events expertise and experience to the association's growth. If you are not already a member, please do think about joining us and the selection of other members that you see here on the screen as we plot our way forward into the next stage of the World Broadband Association journey. Thank you, everybody, and enjoy the rest of today's event. Thank you, Mr. Mark Oliver. Thank you very much for your contribution for the development of the broadband industry and your promotion for WBBA. And uh, I hope more and more uh, members will come to address the challenges you just mentioned in your slide and we're together uh, shape the uh, world to make it a better place with our broadband connections. Now it's let's welcome Mr. Surachit, Senior Executive Vice President from NT for video speech. Good afternoon. Ni hao. Swadi krab. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow speakers, distinguished guests, and all the audience join us from around the world. My name is Surachet. I am from Thailand, the land of smiles. I represent National Telecom Public Company Limited, or NT for short. On behalf of NT, I would like to send over most sincerely congratulations on official launch of the World Broadband Association, or WBBA. A very special thank to China Telecom for taking initiative and bringing together on available resource to face ongoing industry challenge, support the drive of promoting healthy, sustainable development of the cloud and broadband industry. Perhaps more of people here are not so familiar with National Telecom PLC, so let me tell you about our story first. We are Thai state-owned telecommunication company. Our core business include cloud and broadband mobile, fixed-line telephone, and international telecommunication infrastructure. Officially, NT was established in 2021 
the merging of the Cap Telecom and TOT Public Company Limited, with a long history having establishment there in the 1950s. As more you can imagine, merging to existing state enterprise, both with independent operation, was not easy. Since the years ago, we have made a lot of progress along the way. We have successfully executed the merging successfully on people, legal, financial, and administrative side. However, on the broadband networking infrastructure, we still have a long way to go to combine two embedded networks. From the pre-merging day, this is something we will have to dig deep to plan, design, execute, and how to merge the two networks together. In Thailand broadband industry, have seen rapid development in recent years. Although our history originated from fixed telephone, from the day when telephone was first introduced in Thailand, our broadband customer here mostly have migrated from copper to FCTX. In recent times, we are facing many challenges, not only from merging, but also dealing with increasing competitive marketing landscape, especially broadband space. We hope to grow our existing customer base around 2 million households. We are also hoping to play a pinnacle role in digital transformation of Thailand ICT to cloud technology, both the government and private sector. The establishment of WBBA could have come a better time for us. We hope to better connect to the leading industry player around the world, learn to cooperate with other WBBA members, share our lesson learned, and we would love to learn the lesson from others. We have facing similar challenges for us. We would love to be able to learn and develop new business here together with fellow WBBA members and apply this to our local market. We also do hope we can make some contribution to the overall health and sustainability of the entire sector to the WBBA. We would like to thank China Telecom once for organizing the inaugural events to give us the opportunity to share our story. We hope to work really closely with China Telecom and fellow WBBA members and associate to expand the horizon of the cloud and the broadband space, not only in Thailand, but around the world. Thank you. Sesha. Thank you, Mr. Sarachit. NT is the most influential companies in, uh, telco companies in Thailand, and it have a wide business coverage and develop very fast. And thank you for Mr. Sarachit would like to uh, cooperate with uh, uh, the world leading telco companies on the WBBA platform. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, thank you. And right now, uh, we would like to uh, add uh, a, a new, uh, we would like to switch back to Mr. Uh, General, Secretary General of ITU, because uh, Mr. Zhao just mentioned online to me that uh, he would like to add a few words uh, for the audiences. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lee, uh, to give me an additional chance to speak to the audience. And this uh, celebration is every, you know, everyone waited for some time, and uh, I consider this uh, absolutely important for our future to have everybody be connected with uh, such kind of uh, you know, association to help us to complete our job and to give us chance to have uh, our goals achieved by 2030. I congratulate you and all the uh, organizers for this wonderful uh, celebration. Uh, having listened to all these speakers, to be honest with you, it's normally not the case for me to stay uh, for any event from beginning to the end. Uh, I, I was uh, very impressed, impressed by those uh, industry leaders who show their recognition of uh, importance of uh, broadband connection. I, I mentioned in my speech that uh, I highlighted uh, four I strategies over recent years including infrastructure, investment, innovation, and inclusiveness. Now, of course, as I mentioned in my speech, broadband connection is one of the important or key part of our you know, infrastructure. But I also mentioned that the investment is absolutely important. Now, 
For the investment, uh, there are some challenges for the investment on the ICT infrastructure. Let me just highlight two of these. Many national incumbent telecom operators are charged by their authority to take up the task to connect those unconnected. While these incumbent national operators might have struggled to survive from their operation in their markets. There are many commercial and industrial network owners who have potentials to help us, but they do not know how to contribute. So this kind of uh, potentials may not be able to be addressed individually by some industrial leaders. But if we have a platform like this, then we can get uh, all these opinions stronger and have collective voices this eager call to raise the issue and to represent the business with a common voice on those concerns and for guidance. Of course, there are some other reasons we need to have an international platform like this. So IT has received such information for some years. We tried to address the call by organizing several rounds of discussions on this topic during the IT World Telecom event in the last years. I was uh, pleased to discuss this issue with the industry leaders like Mr. Curry Wen of China Telecom and Mr. Mm -hmm. Shih Zhejun of Huawei during those panel discussions. ITU encouraged an international platform established by the stakeholders for such important topic. Now, let me just uh, not to abuse your, your confidence. To close my, my short remarks, I would also advise the WPPA to learn from GSMA to run this business. I thank you very much and wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Mr. Zhao Holin. You are very much welcome. Thank you for your input. Uh, see, that's the beauty of uh, our online ceremony and the broadband. Uh, you, Mr. Zhao Holin also make an exceptionally fantastic conclusion for our speech session. 各位嘉宾、女士们、先生们，今天发布活动的精彩演讲环节到此结束。下面啊，让我们进入到今天最激动人心的时刻，有请线上线下的嘉宾共同见证WPBA正式成立发布，请大家观看。Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, now. I would like to invite all of you to join us with the most exciting session of WBBA's official launch. Please hold your breath.尊敬的各位领导让我们一起携手努力 Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Thank you for the key interest to WBBA. Thank you for your long-term support. In the future, WBBA will work with industry partners to strengthen communication and cooperation, promote technological innovation, drive the development of the global cloud and broadband industry, and contribute to the prosperity of the society. 
Let's work together to promote the construction of digital information infrastructure, bridge the digital divide, and create a shared future for digital economy. This is the end of World Broadband Association official launch ceremony. Thank you so much, and see you next time. 女士们、先生们，全球云网宽带产业协会正式成立发布会到此结束。谢谢大家，再见。